So this is another aspect, another aspect. Well, anyway, it's not aspects, but it's another aspect of getting uh, metrics or some observability component to a dashboard where you can see it. And in this case, it's Python code. And I wanted to be able to get traces. I have a nested set of calls that I'm making. Um, and I want to be able to get an idea what those method times are. So this is a little different than metrics where we actually can run timers or counts and send those to application insights as metrics. In this case, we're going to send open census spans uh, to application insight, and that will give us some insights into uh, in a call chain what this looks like. Now, they also have a bunch of open census exporters for third party libraries. So if you have a web endpoint or you're calling a web endpoint, they can do all that automatically. In this case, I wanted a custom set of metrics. No, I'm sorry, custom set of traces and timing. So I'd have an idea what it looked like. Right. So this is querying Python transactions and spans. A span is a length of time and you can have nested spans. And so you can have a function call and a function call and a function. And with open census, you would actually get the oh, you know what? Let me show you. So this is a case where we have a main function calling four other uh, internal functions. And so what happens is uh, we set up a span, we set up a timing window on the main, and then we set up timing on each of these very specific methods, not all the methods in the app. And so now we have what uh, we can get all kinds of interesting traces about where the time in a transaction went. Okay, so in this particular case, this is the speed test app, we actually get uh, data back, what happens is this thing runs, a uh, calls the speed test uh, API, the speed test API runs speed test, gives us data back. Those are metrics. But if I was curious, and it'll, so it'll give us the statistics from the speed test API, right? From the speed test website or the speed test API. And so what ends up happening though, is sometimes I might want additional around the methods themselves. Maybe I'll even compare that to metrics to get an idea what kind of overhead setup time there was. So in this case, uh, it goes out and gets the server, gets the best server, measures a download, measures an upload. I'll have to look at why it didn't ping. Um, and so that's what we'd like to get out of this. And we'd like it to show up in the Azure dashboard. So the way this works is we have uh, two sites and um, basically I, these two sites were my house actually. So I drew them as big buildings, but they're houses. They run the speedtest.net API and they then send a set of counters and gauges to application insight. I also hooked up tracing to this so that we can get that span thing I just showed you. So the way spans work is you can set up, these are basically, it'll time some span of code, right? So in Python, it's super easy. Uh, there's some things that are great about this Python code and this is the open census library. The important part there is with the tracer and you give the span a name as span, everything inside that nesting will be part of the time for that span. And then down inside of the span that's called main, we actually have uh, four other spans. Um, we have get servers, get best servers, measure download, and measure upload. So in those cases, each of those width blocks will have its own timer each, and they will all be with inside and contribute to the parent. And if it turns out the parent time takes a certain amount of time and you add up all the enters and they don't take add up to that, that means the parent actually had some work of its own to do. Um, in addition to calling these other functions. So that's really how we end up with this kind of graph. This is the outer span. Then we have four child spans. And you can see there's setup time here, right? There's actually, this is the total run time for the main span, but the get server span is relatively short and it's after an offset. So I'm guessing there's some setup time in there. And that's what we're looking at. Okay, so let's go back through this. That was how this worked. Now, once we set up these spans, the question is, how do we get to it? You know what? Let me run some data. So this is this Python net check. It basically goes out and runs the speed test CLI. So in this case, I actually added an upload and a download. So we can see we actually got the servers running the download tests. Then we run an upload test. Then we run, a, you know, so we ran the four tests internally. And we can see that metrics were actually generated on those very simple calls for get best server, get server, what's the ping time, what's the upload, what's the download, right? Now, because we have four spans, um, the metrics may not align necessarily up with the spans, that's fine. The metrics are the counters and gauges, we might have a bunch of those, and the spans are really about code. So the metrics are about some business or data capability, or they could also be timing, um, but a lot of times they're counts or whatever, and in this case, they were the recorded from the CLI. So, if, if we go, what we're going to do is we're going to click on, go into App Insights and click on our 
app insights uh, instance that's created. We can go out and look at that. And um, this is short enough, I think I'm good, but I guess I'll change it. Uh, so when you get to app insights, um, basically what I did is you take the instrumentation key that's in the connection string and you put that in your app and it'll automatically post to this app insights instance. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the logs. Um, so everything that goes into App Insight actually ends up as a log analytic thing. And then based on how they're categorized, they show up in other places. So here, uh, I'm just going to run for the last 30 minutes. Now, it turns out I'm using dependencies. I don't think I told you this. Uh, this part. No, I lost it. Oh, here it is. So this is the part that's interesting. Metrics come in as in the insights table as custom metrics. The trace exporter, which is the one that does these spans, comes in under dependencies. And then you can also have a log exporter. It's a little weird. Azure Monitor and Application Insights have their own name for things, and Open Census has a slightly different one. So you just kind of got to pay attention that the API may call it one thing, and then you'll see the something else in the dashboard. So the thing we're looking for is dependencies. And if we go back to where I if we go back to where I was and run it, look at the query, we can see that, you know what, let me make this a little bigger. That is definitely not helpful. So let me pull that out. You can see that there actually is a dependencies table here. That's actually the sub part of the log analytics we're going to look at. And let's um, scroll. Oh, man, you know, you make things too big and then suddenly everything doesn't work. So let's scroll, uh, oh, this is what I needed. There we go. So if I look at dependencies for the last 30 minutes, that's what I'm gonna run here. I can hit this run button. So I'm querying in the log space, in my app insights against the dependencies with no criteria. And you can actually see here that we have um, kind of the, the things we saw in the span, right? The span, ding. The span had a main, span had a get servers, scan, span had get best servers. So you can see main, get servers, get best servers. If you can't see that, I can make it bigger and I can shrink this thing. And with the interesting part of this is when these spans are set up, right, the spans are actually related to each other. So what I'm going to do is, man, that is really horrible. I'm going to, well, I'll do it anyway. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around a little bit. So we have a span ID, which is basically a trace ID. And what I am going to do is put these all the these IDs near each other so you can get a feel for how this is going to work. And we're going to come down here and get the parent ID and put that up there. OK, and then if I turn that off. So what you can see here is there's for these three actually you know what let's get the latest so you got sometimes you got to sort these bad boys so you can actually be getting data from multiple servers and multiple processes i actually got this running in a couple places so it's not <laughs> made a mistake all right so the important part here though really and i have an example of this is that when you run that query with those spans right we talked about these spans so this will be a span ID. These will all have span IDs. These will have a parent, be this parent span ID for all these. So these will have their own span IDs and they'll all have a parent that's shared. If we come back and we look here, you can see that, like, let's pick this one here, right? So this is C6, it ends in B6. You can see that this is the ID. It's the ID for the main. And you can see that that same 1B6 here, 1B6, 1B6, those are all parented, have a parent, which is this main. So those one is the parent and it's got its own span ID. And then the parent IDs for all of those it are pointed at that. And what that does is it lets you have an arbitrarily, arbitrary nesting, right? I've got my own span ID and then I've got a parent ID for the one that's right above me. In this case, because we only have one deep the parent ID for all of the children is the same. So all of these four uh, measure, upload, measure, download, get best servers, get servers, and they're sorted in reverse time order here. Those are all parented under this 
the parent ID, the ID of the top level um, operation. So the parent ID of the top level is the operation ID. And then we have a single operation ID. So you have one global ID for everybody that's in a scope. Then you have a parent ID for the for however many of those that are in that scope. And then every one of those that's nested gets linked with their current and their parent. Their parent is the ID of the one above them. And the one below them's parent is the ID of the one in the middle. So super, pretty straightforward actually. In this case, all I did was query for dependencies across any time and it just worked and we ended up with, and I wish, oh, there we go. That's sort of ugly. Um, so this main, this one right here shares the same parent ID with those. Okay, so I hope that's good, right? So then we query, but that's not, that still doesn't give us this view. So it turns out um, that we can actually look at the trans. So if we view those spans as transactions, right? So we have metrics, which are just counters and gauges. And then we have these transactions and you can have transactions with scope in them. So they treat anything as a span as a transaction. And then you would kind of have the nested scope of that. So let's see if we got any in the last 30 minutes. And so if I click on that, we can actually see in here that um, we have these, I don't know how well you can see it, but if you zoom up, uh, you can see that we have a main and we have get servers and get best servers. So that was that like two, two only two sub spans. We had, the one I was looking for that was the one that had four sub spans. And so you can see in here, we have main, get servers, get servers, measure download, measure upload, right? So these five represent a span that's near each other. And that span probably is this one right here. So every time we do an operation, we generate a transaction and that's just going to generate a spike for however many spans are in that transaction. And then in my case, because this only runs every couple minutes, every three minutes, you see a spike with a transaction and you can see the one I landed here. And I don't know why there's one missing in the middle. I don't know what I did. Oh, maybe I installed it on this machine. Anyway, so what's interesting here is, so let's pick uh, this one called measure upload. If I click on it, it'll drill in it'll actually show me the graph and the transaction that this measure upload is in, right? So I had four sub transactions, source sub actions, method calls that were inside this main. And if I run a query of any type, so in this case, I, I, uh, there's also some traces in here, but I could say, um, I could do something like this, right? I can type in measure download is the type. And in this case, we're only going to get measure downloads. And you can see that the downloads happen on a regular basis. And the fact that I ran a couple right near each other. Actually, this is the last 24 hours. Let's go to the last hour so we get less data. What I want to do is um, click on it. And it'll take me to the trace. It'll show me that this measure download is embedded in a transaction and what's around it and what the time is. We want to be able to get spans out of Python and get an idea how deep the calls are and how long each of those calls are to see what they contributed to the time. In this case, what happens is we run a Python program that connects a bunch of different sites and publishes those span transaction information out to application insights. And that span setup code is open census and you do tracing.span with nested tracers inside of it. That gives you that nesting capability. You do this all shows up in application insights. Um, and when you look at application insights, everything can actually be stored as logs, right? It's stored as logs, so you can query it as logs. That's what we showed here, um, that we actually ran a query on dependencies from the log area. When you actually run a query in the tra transaction search, it will look for dependencies and traces, in this case, and not metrics, not counters, not gauges, uh, and that will give you this. And then when you drill down into any of those, it will show you the transaction it's actually in and what the timing were. In this case, this is one of the ones where I didn't do a download. So there's a main and only two uh, nested calls. And so it gives us the timing on those. And that's it. I hope that was useful.